the mayor, the governor, everyone's saying it. The key to keeping your family and everyone safe is stay inside. Joining us now via Skype is Andrella Dubay from the University of Chicago's Harris School of Public Policy. Professor Dubay, uh, just the other day you had an opinion piece in the New York Times, great read, thoughtful, about how we really need to make what you call radical changes as a community. Can you expound on that? Absolutely. So here in Chicago, as with other cities around the country, we're going to have to embark on some radical behavioral changes that we're not used to. We're going to have to stay indoors. We're going to have to socially distance ourselves from friends and neighbors, which we're not used to doing. Um, and our political leaders have called on us to do this. The city has issued a stay at home order, but not everyone is listening. Um, and for that reason, I think what we really need to do is to enlist more voices from the community and community leaders to amplify these messages that we're getting from our political leaders to encourage us to go down this path and enact these behavioral changes that we're not used to embarking on. Yeah, you bring up a good point. You point out also the distrust in government. You did in the piece. We hear it every day. We hear one message from the president, another message from the governor, and you just said it. So who else in the community do we need to hear from because obviously some people aren't listening. Who will they listen to? We have faith-based organizations. We have pastors, imams, yeah. rabbis who have the community's ear and they can raise their voices to articulate public health do's and don'ts. We have wonderful community organizations that work on issues like violence reduction and even block clubs that work on issues of safety this is a great time for them to pivot their messages to articulating safety do's and don'ts to enhance the public health safety given the current crisis. That's a really good point. You basing a lot of this on the findings from another epidemic that you've studied and the nuances of it, the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. Uh, key takeaways from that that we can use today are what? So, you know, obviously Ebola isn't COVID-19 and Sierra Leone is in West Africa, a very different context. But what we saw there was even before the Ebola crisis hit, we worked in some communities to get the community more closely involved with their local health officials. And what we saw is in those places, they had built up greater trust. And when Ebola hit in 2014, they were much more willing to do the things that were required of them, including going in to uh, test for Ebola, which enabled earlier treatment, which enabled faster containment of the disease and contained its spread and actually led to a third fewer deaths from Ebola out of the cases there compared to other places where the community hadn't been as involved um, in terms of the communication and ongoing dialogue with uh, the local health officials and community leaders. Oh, fascinating. Professor Dubay, thank you for joining us from the New York Times to Hour 18. Thanks for stopping in this Friday evening. Thank you very much for having me.